Hello once again our most developed student my name is confident and welcome to our revision guide where I take you through the topics of wave sound and light for grade 10 and this is your ultimate guide everything you need to know as you prepare for your final exams be it in June or you're writing in November so these short lessons are going to guide you through what you need to know on wave sound and light so in the previous lesson which is lesson number one we have already covered on pulses the transverse pulses so now what we have done is we did the transverse pulse now we are looking at transverse waves so if this is your first time coming into in uh, contact with this channel this is what we've just done in this channel this is what we've just covered and some activity about these pulses and now we are looking at transverse waves what does it mean if you missed out on a previous video it means you are new in this channel i'll encourage you and ensure that you are subscribed because there is going to be lots and lots of content i want to share with you when it comes to this physical science for this term so make sure that you're subscribed lots of videos are still going to come your way and i'll prepare you for your final exams i'll prepare you to make sure that you get that distinction that you want just surprise them at home with a good pass what do you lose so Let's take a journey and join and be part of this family. All right, this is the family of the 24 minute lessons. Let's look at this one. Transverse waves. Then uh, you see already it's telling you a lot there. It says two types of mechanical waves. That word mechanical waves, we are saying when you look at these waves, whether it's transverse or uh, later longitudinal waves, we call them mechanical waves. And by mechanical waves, we are saying they need um they are mechanical in the sense that they they alter or they need a medium to move so the mechanical here they travel through a medium it can be gas it can be liquid it can be solid see they are mechanical waves meaning they cannot travel except there is a medium in which this wave travels and the first type is transverse waves now what is the definition of a transverse wave he says a transverse wave is a succession of trans Verse pulses that's what we covered in the previous lesson just know that a succession of transverse pulses or you can define them as a wave in which the medium vibrates at right angles to the direction of propagation or the waves advance so that is the other definition that you can use so these are words that you need to know the words like propagation in waves is a common word or the waves advance another word to replace propagation is where the waves is moving towards okay quick one sketch uh, sketch of uh, one transverse wave so I just want to sketch a transverse wave for you there so whenever you are sketching a transverse wave the first thing that you need to know is your equilibrium line which is the line of rest so don't sketch a wave without identifying your line of rest so if this is my line of rest as you can see that and i'm starting from point this point we'll call it point a right remember it's my line of rest so let's say here i will name it later and let's look at my center this is my center point right and as i said i'm going i want to sketch this wave this is how my wave is gonna look like it says one transverse wave you're gonna have it like this like this like this there is my wave all right so now what does each mean very important points i have got a point at the top there i've got a point at the bottom there and i've got those three points i mean how many points here we call that a this point we call it b uh, this point we call it C we call it D and we call it E so we have got these points let me try to make it a little bit down because I want to label a few things there so they are my points we called it a single wave one transverse wave don't forget one transverse wave so how do you label it a is the starting point remember and we said at the beginning we call that the point of rest so that's where we are beginning and we call it the point of rest and that particular line that we draw a e 
as you can see a e is the point of rest and what's the other weight it's equilibrium don't forget that all right that point is called the point of rest so from there we are saying this wave is going to move to point B. Now look at this. Point B is called the crest. Are you with me? What is the crest? It is the highest position or the highest point of the wave. All right. All right. I'm looking. I'm showing you the definitions there. Crest, the highest point of the wave, and then it goes to point C, which is back again to what? To the equilibrium position, which is rest. At that moment from a b c if i say a to b to c do you see that what i've done is what i've done a pulse do you see that so that's a pulse from a b and c now there is a second pulse which is what c d and e do you see that that is a pulse hence the definition of a wave to say it is a succession of transverse pulses so if you start having lots of pulses we call that a wave are you seeing that so we've got two pulses here and two pulses from a wave in other ways one wave has got from a b c we can call half a wave it's half and the other one a pulse is half half of a wave i see that and then we go to d look at point d is the lowest point and we call that a trough trough is the what the lowest point of a wave the lowest point in a wave is called a trough and then e returns to rest very very important uh part that you needed to know so if i can move my p on top there then you've got obviously this particular line, you still remember it? From the rest position to the highest point. What do you call that line? We called this distance the amplitude. Still remember that? That is the amplitude. So where, what is the definition of an amplitude? You can just look at it. It is from, we call this point rest, remember? So if they say define an amplitude, you are going to say it is the distance from rest to the highest point of the wave or to the crest is it the only one or you can use this side here look at it from rest again you see that point there is rest to trough again is an amplitude so the amplitude can be defined in two points is the distance from rest to crest or the distance from rest to trough so it is the highest distance from rest to the highest point or the lowest point of a wave so this is one wave and then we have a special line it is not going to be easy now to indicate it but i'm going to indicate it uh whatever way this distance here i'm going to change the color that distance that long distance there which is our a to e that distance a to e what this what name is it called we call that distance the what the wavelength the length of the wave so it's the wave length is one word wavelength and it has got a special sign lambda this is how you do it that is the sign for lambda like a, a curve like that so this is the wavelength from a to b so that's what we mean when we talk about these waves. So you've got now, let's go to the definition of terms. The crest is the highest point position of the wave. We talked about the crest, right? The highest position, the trough, the lowest position of the wave, the wavelength, look at it, lambda, is the distance between two consecutive points in a wave. This will make sense when I demonstrate it. Says so e.g., the distance from crest to crest or trough to trough. But I'll explain it in the next part. And then what is rest or equilibrium position? It is the undisturbed position of the wave. Remember A, uh, it was A, C, and E. That was the crest. The amplitude R is the maximum disturbance of a particle from its rest or equilibrium position or distance from crest to crest or trough. I mean from rest, sorry, distance from rest 
to crest or rest to trough and is measured in meters don't forget that now i'm going to draw as we said a, a wave is a succession of what of pulses i'm going to draw again another wave here so that we can just appreciate um these waves so i'm going to draw them but the way i'm going to draw these waves it's going to be more than uh two waves so let's say i've got this division line i'm gonna have it there that's my center i'm just uh, trying to make sure that i draw something a bit uniform so these are my centers and then i've got the center of a center 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 now look at this i'm going to come up with a wave here how is it gonna look uh let's say i'm going to turn there I want to turn there. Remember, a wave is more like a sign. Uh, if you remember these types of those graphs, we call that the sign graph. You know, that is a wave. It's like a sign graph. So that is where I want to be turning. I don't want to turn anything far from this. Now look at this. This is my wave. Turn there. Turn there. I turn there. see that you can draw something better of course what do you call this we call this a sinusoidal sinusoidal graph look or a sine graph so look at this this is a wave are you with me now i want you to pay close attention to what i'm going to be explaining now if this is a wave we are going to now look at a few labeling again now i'm going to label the points here if i can have this point being a and the last point let's call it z now a to z as you said a to z is the what the rest position this is undisturbed or the equilibrium line equilibrium don't worry equilibrium you just know i just did that part now look at a few points that you need to study also that you need to uh, look at this wave if i move from a and then i come to let's call it b and then uh, i come to c i'll call that c i'll call this d along this rest position e f g and h i did that intentionally i'll explain to you why now if i move from a to b that's half a wave from b to c it's half a wave it's a pulse but now that distance there uh, look at this distance from a to c you see that particular distance there is a what that is a wavelength that's lambda see you can choose anything i can take any distance as long as it is two pulses if I take E for example, that distance from E to F is half and then to G, see this distance, that's a wavelength. See, if I know those distance, it's also going to be like a wavelength. It doesn't matter. I can test the distance from e, D, for example. Let me take a distance from D here. See that distance from D and then to E, half a wavelength and then I need a distance to F that is also a wavelength you see how it's like so that is also a wavelength that's why they say two successive points look a for example is on the left side of the wave and look at what look at c it's also on the left side of the wave i see what happened now let's choose another point let's choose another point let's choose another point that can be equal to a wa wavelength they say it a wavelength is the distance from what yeah from crest to crest now let's go and choose two crest there is a point there there is a point remember we call this the crest the highest point of a wave see there is the distance that's the wavelength right i can choose any uh another crest you, you see another crest can be here to there that's another wavelength do you see that those are wavelengths or they use the point from trough to
to trough so let me just erase here so that i don't think so the distance from crest to crest or what trough to trough so look at the trough there is one at the bottom there is the other one here if i use that look at this so this is also another sign of a wavelength so don't be uh, mistaken now to get confused on the wavelength now look at it i can choose any other point they said it is the distance between two consecutive points in a wave for example if i choose point a this point let me call it point x see it's on my left hand side now i must choose another point on the next wave which is on the consecutive side so where do you think it can be i can't put it there at point no but look at it there is another point that i can also point there similar on the left hand side i'll call it y look at these two points they look on the same side they are on the left hand side so if i look at that distance there that distance is a wavelength see that i can choose any other point random if i choose that point right then that point let's call it m where do you think is the next wavelength it is a point on the same side look this is the right hand side now this can be n that distance m n is a wavelength is on the consecutive consecutive means go and look on the next side of the wave a similar point that is in the exact position but in the other side of the, in the other wave on the next wave that is a that is a wavelength are you seeing that it doesn't matter where you choose you can also guess with me any point for example let's choose that point so when i choose that point i say let's go and look at the other point it can't be that because this point is on the right but this point is on the left you see it can't be that point it must be a similar point see that which is also on the left then when i join those points here i get a wavelength so if i can ask you how many waves do i have here let's start from uh the beginning if you can look at the wave from a uh, let me use something different here and where okay let me try to use yellow where that is clear look from a to b is half to c is one wavelength from c d e two wavelength e f g three wavelength three waves e and z is four waves so here we have got four waves in here you see that we have got four waves and then with that it allows us now to come with another kind of um scenarios where it says waves in phase say so these are waves with their crest and troughs in line now let me show you quickly what we mean by waves in phase so if i'm going to draw a wave remember i said whenever you're looking at a wave for example if i just do this to you and say this is a wave Okay, I want it to be uniform. You see, it's a bit dif difficult actually. This is a wave. Right? So when I give you a wave like that, and then I say these waves are in phase, phase. But always remember, try to come up with an equilibrium line because there must be an equilibrium line. The way it must be in the center there might be difficult to move it in but let me try to adjust this you see there must be an equilibrium pos position then it becomes easier for you uh to what to understand that wave so if i'm saying these waves are in phase i also look at another wave but it's better with a, a line like this if they are in phase it means if this is going up it's also going up like the wave it's going down it's going up is going down is going up see these are in phase the crest is the crest the trough is the trough i think that then waves out of phase is the opposite look at this if i'm drawing something like this and then i say i'm starting there this is my wave this is my wave this is my wave like that 
then when I'm saying they're out of phase also I bring in my line here out of phase means they're opposing each other when it's going up this way will it go now see down up down up see that so look at the outer phase now if this is the crest that is the trough if this is the trough that is the crest see that if this is the crest that is the trough that is outer phase that's what i mean it says uh, these are waves when their crest and troughs are in line in phase waves out of phase this is when the crest of one wave is in line or corresponds with the trough of another wave just remember that part all right and then when it comes back here on this lesson is the pendulum the pendulum now it's one interesting part here uh, on the uh, part of the wave but for your grade 10 I think they don't really talk much of the pendulum but let me just quickly show you without uh, doing much on the pendulum here what we're meaning is suppose you have got you know what is a pendulum pendulum is something that is going to be hanging let me use a different line here something that is hanging down like this and then when it's hanging down you have got a kind of something like this it's a string and a metal ball so what it's doing is it's moving in kind of a circle like this so it's more like moving like this so it's moving this direction and that direction that's like a pendulum are you with me so if i can call this point here let's call it a and then we go to b and then we go to c you see so now when we talk of that there is this word the amplitude so what is the amplitude now you're going to move from a you see to the highest point the highest point is what is b so a is called rest already this is rest when the pendulum is not moving so when you are going to draw a graph you'll be having it like this just want to show you on this pendulum so you have got point a here which is rest now we go to point b i'll mark point b here and point b is the highest point remember when it's moving it's swinging so it will swing to the highest point so this will be like this that's the highest point that's your point b then after point b it goes back to point a to the rest so it's back there to point a so it's like this see how a pendulum does and then from point a it goes to point c now c is the highest point but on the other side so we're going to mark point c as the highest point that's why it's on the other side hence it's at the bottom and then from point c it goes back to point a so you've got another point here retaining it to point a so this is c then it returns to point A and then returns to point A now you have done one wave so it's from A to B B to A A to C and back to A so look at it it's one wave now from A to B look at the distance we call that the amplitude so A to B becomes your amplitude and then the vibration cycle here is from a to b to a to c to a and then the frequency the frequency okay not the frequency before that the period the period is about time what is the period we'll define it as the time taken for for one vibration cycle just to do this vibration cycle to do this from a b c I mean A, B, A, C, D. This distance, remember, we called it the wavelength. So the time taken to complete this vibration cycle or the wavelength here is called the period. It's measured in seconds. And then the frequency is the number of these vibrations in one second. So if you measure these vibrations, maybe there are five vibrations in one second. That is called the frequency. But I'm going to tell you that. Now, let's look at the definition of terms in this uh, part just going to be ending up soon definition of terms the first one is called the period 
it is the time taken for one full wavelength to pass a given point period is measured in seconds you need to know this definition you need to master it if they ask it you need to give it as is you don't have an option you need to cram it if it takes you to cram it it is the time period t for time time taken time taken for a one full wavelength to pass a given point but frequency is the number of these vibrations on the number of wavelengths in one second number of vibrations passing a given point in one second now if there are five vibrations per second that's frequency and frequency you measure it in hertz now relationship between what frequency and period you need to know that look at this it says frequency is inversely proportional to period and vice versa meaning frequency is equal to one over t it's a very important equation or period t is equal to one over f why because frequency frequency is inversely proportional so which means when frequency increases as you can see here it means period will decrease or when period increases frequency will decrease inversely means when one goes up the other one goes down then lastly the wave speed says distance what is the wave speed of the wave which is denoted by letter v is the distance traveled by a point on a wave in meters in a certain time in seconds so speed of wave just like any speed speed is distance over time remember so the speed of wave is the distance traveled by a point on a wave in meters in a certain time period now wave speed are affected by the type of the material so what what impacts the wave speed or what affects it the type of the material remember we called it the medium and the medium is at the three types the gas the liquid and the solid and then the density of the material will affect the speed of the wave as well as the temperature and then wave speed is not remember this wave speed is not affected by wavelength we're going to talk about that now two formula for wave speed what did we say we said in general speed is distance over time but now this distance we say it is the wavelength over time is the period see so speed here is distance over period but now you remember we said f is equal to 1 over t so which means here i can say speed right is equal to distance which is wavelength and then period is 1 over t see that's what i'm having so speed here is equal to wavelength but 1 over t is that f you see you can put f there where there is 1 over t wavelength times f so that's what we have but we told speed we say it is called v that's the formula now v is lambda f but sometimes i like it to say v is f lambda you know it doesn't matter lambda times f remember f lambda it means there is a times in between or there it's f times lambda means frequency times wavelength that's the formula for finding the speed of the wave are you with me all right now wave speed can therefore be defined as the product you're multiplying by frequency and the wavelength of a wave now you can see what follows next is the activity and this particular activity i'm not going to cover it now i want you to join me in the next lesson do it now i'm gonna project it here it says this lesson is trying to find the effect of a wave wavelength on the wave speed so you do this lesson calculate the wave speed for now then we're going to analyze it in the next part so do for me you have got the medium you have the wavelength and the frequency remember the wave speed formula is v is equal to frequency times wavelength can you find the answers here all right and then after that we're going to look at the conclusion what does it mean so the part of this as the these are the questions they will ask you as the wavelength of a wave as the wavelength of a wave in a uniform medium increases its speed will what you need to explain as the wavelength of a wave in a uniform medium increases its frequency will what you need to explain 
the speed of the wave therefore depends upon what all right then we're going to look at that so look at these questions pause pause this video calculate them but you need to join me in the next lesson i'm going to cover this with you thank you